Peace of the Lord. We're going to open up our Bibles in 1 Samuel chapter 17. 17. 17. 17. Verse 32. No. 17:32. For Samuel, 17, verse 32. There it is. And the word of the Lord says the following. Then David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail because of him. Your servant will go and fight with his with this Philistine. Now thirty seven says the following Moreover David said, The Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear, he will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said to David, Go and the Lord be with you. The church may sit down. My brethren, this text is a text that is very known of ours, well known of ours, because this is a text that shows us a project that God created for man. And last month we celebrated another year birthday of uh, uh, the moment in which this project, the work of the Holy Spirit arrived amongst us. And last month also we celebrated 500 years of the Protestant Reformation. That for us also was a great gift from the part of the Lord because a new path was opened up. Our understanding regarding God and the Word of the Lord. And this project was completely clarified. Our vision regarding what is salvation in Jesus was clearer. There's no doubt salvation was by grace in Jesus. There's no doubt about this. That's why we're leaving moments of celebration. As we celebrate this great blessing of the Lord, tomorrow we're going to participate on the um, Supper of the Lord, another feast, and all this is part of this project. Because for us, it is a gift from the Lord. The moment in which the Lord took us away from this world and brought us to this path, we only have received from the Lord blessings. The trials are out there. They will always remain. But even our vision, our understanding regarding our trials, they, they change. Even our understanding, it becomes clearer. Because we know that in our trials, we're going to have victories. If we preserve our faith, if we fight for our blessing, if we remain faithful to the Lord, He will, God will honor us. But if we uh, give up on our path, we are going to be ashamed. Because the commitment of God with man is based on what man has uh, made as a definition to the Lord. And that's how we're going to see the experience of David, young David. The people was in a war. All, everyone know, and even the children keep, can give in a better uh, lesson than us. 40, 40 days, the Philistines, they were um, insulting the people of the Lord. It was a confrontation, it was a war tactic. At that moment, there was no confrontation, physical confrontation, but it was um, 
there was a affrontation, a series of insults. For 40 days, the people of the Lord, the army of Israel that was there, being governed by Saul, was leaving a moment of fear without knowing will be today in which the day in which we will be attacked will, today will be the day in which we will be have to face the Philistine army and every day Goliath will go there and he would begin to um, confront the Jewish people and when Goliath would leave they would feel a, a little relief and then they would think he will, will he come back? Will he, will be now when the army of the Philistine will attack us? And you can imagine the situation of the Jewish people. The situation here is the same as the one that many of us are living through, being um, insulted by the world, living moment of fear or terror, even moments in which they don't know what is going to happen uh, uh, tomorrow or if uh, I'm going to be able to withstand all of it, will it be that the trial uh, that I'm going to face tomorrow will be the last trial? Will be able to uh, overcome that the illness of my family or at work? People live like this. People inside of church, they're living like this. Being be insulted and confronted every moment. And that was what happened at that time. It was a war tactic. We see this in other verses of the Bible. Gideon also went through moments like this. They would go there and uh, sow and took care of the, f the harvest and when it came time for them to um, eat of the, the fruit of their labor, then the enemy would go there and steal it. It was a defeat, frustration, right? Many live like this. And here, the picture here shows the Philistine army camped on one side and the Israeli army camped on the other side and every day they were being insulted. And David came, he was young, he was not a soldier, he was a shepherd. And when he came, uh, as a request of his father to deliver food to his brethren that were there, enlisted, waiting for the battle, David heard, he listened to what was going on. And David asked, who is this? Who is this Philistine that would uh, say these kind of things against our God? It cannot be. So then David speaks with Saul, and Saul was a little concerned, thinking, this is a young man. It cannot happen. It cannot be allowed. And David mentioned his own experience. He told the king, King, I used to take care of the flock of my father and even and then a bear, the beasts, it shows here, a lion would come and a bear, they would steal the a sheep from my father and but I would go after it, I would not allow it, I would go there would grab the bear by the beard and I would wound it and kill it. And I would face this Philistine. We cannot allow it to happen. And that was the word. And, and he said more. The Lord delivered me from the, from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear. And he will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. David, David, didn't say that he was stronger or valiant, that he knew how to fight. He said, the Lord deliver me from the hand, or from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear. And the same Lord will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. That was the faith of David. 
That was the definition of David. He trusted in the Lord. He didn't trust in anybody else. He didn't trust in his tactic and his technique and his strength or his will. No, he trusted in the Lord. And he went. What else did he do? He went to face Goliath. What else did he do? Who can tell me? No one? How did he go to face Goliath? What did it what did David do? No, not the dickens, no, uh, the, the youth, uh, the women. Who is reading the Bible? What? Yes, he picked up the five of stones. What else did he pick up? He took uh, his sling and a machine gun, right? He went to the, the slum. <laughs> no, no, he took his staff. Took his staff. He went to the river and took five stones. And and took on his bag and went to face Goliath. And we we do uh, we learned uh, something that is very important in, in the work of the Holy Spirit. The Lord gave us weapons. And have to be able to use. It's different than many other things that people tell out there. People that live in, in your other denominations. But when we receive this gift, having the gift of the Lord amongst us, the Lord has given us many revelations. And we know that these five stones, they refer to what? To the means of grace. Prayer. Fasting, early dawn, prayer, reading of the word, glorification, and on and on. This is a gift from the Lord. Those are spiritual weapons. And the servant of the Lord needs to have in his daily life. And these five stones, they need to be where? They need to be in their bag or in other words, in your heart, constantly. And that's where many fail here. That's where many Christians fail. Because they think that the means of grace are only to be used during uh, difficulties. That's where many understand the project of the Lord in an erroneous way. That's when many uh, miss a blessing, the victory. Because they think that when the trial comes, the illness came, that's when they go down and kneel down. And then they, they go praying and fasting. I'm going to fast until nine, and God will have to answer me. I'll fast until noon. I'll sleep until 11.30. And at noon, I'll pray for my fast and the Lord has to answer me because after all I'm fasting many think that and the difference is that a stone is a piece of rock but it can only be found uh, on the river because the stone is like a pebble that has been worked by the water as it, uh, it falls down the river as the stone is goes down the river it loses its edges and corners it loses the access there is only the core the center of the rock it is different than what we see out there when you see the, the, from what you see on any other type of stone the pebble is worked on throughout the days throughout the months the years many times and this pebble goes down there rolling forming that the rounded shape and it has to be that one cannot be any other and David he could have even picked uh, 
taken any of the stone where, where he was. He didn't have to go to the river. No, but David knew. He knew that down there, there it was the pebble and the stone that he needed. Because when he would place it on his sling, it would be a, a sure um, target. It would hit, surely he would hit a target. If he, you know, by on the other hand, used any other kind of stone, that the wind shape of the stone would end up causing him to miss the target. But the one he picked up was the appropriate one. So this is the point I want to leave with to the brethren. The means of grace have to be worked on. Prayer has to be constant. We cannot simply be defined in Jesus being saved souls only when you need to receive something from the part of the Lord. You know why? Because God doesn't doesn't need your fasting. God doesn't need my fast. God doesn't need my early dawn. God doesn't need to see you reading the Bible. We are the ones who need. You are the one who need to bend our knee in the early morning. You need to pray before leaving home. Pray to the Lord. You need to fast uh, for your family, for your financial life, for your personal life, for your spiritual life. Above all, we are the ones who need. The benefits. benefit is for us. God doesn't need your offering. God doesn't need your praise. Sometimes the brother and the praise group think, oh, I sing so much. There are angels that sing well, but uh, not, not more than us. The, the heaven is filled with angels and choirs and archangels praising the Lord eternally. Don't think that you are such a good thing. We are ushers and deacons. We are not doing this for God. God is pleased with our dedication. But He doesn't need your dedication. He's not going to stop being God if you stop uh, adoring Him. You know why? Because the day you stop, even the stones are going to cry for Him. God is eternal. He will always be eternal. The word says this, from generation to generation, God is eternal. There is no benefit. I will do no. no. We we'll do this because we want the blessing of the Lord. You pray to the Lord because you need to have a better life. You come to early dawn. You do your early dawn at home, at home, or when you seek the Lord or read the Bible. It is because you need to sanctify your life for the Lord. The benefit, it's for you, for your life. The benefit for my life. That's why David went there and he chose those pebbles. He placed them on his bag. And at the right time, he used just one, only one. Was He didn't miss the target. That's why, my brethren, when the Lord called us for this work of the Holy Spirit, it was so that we could leave it completely. We cannot serve the Lord halfway. We cannot allow what is the presence of the Lord for our lives escape from our hands. For us, it's a privilege to be here in the house of the Lord. For us, it's a privilege to be part of this church, the, the body of Christ. For us, it's a privilege for the Lord to remove from us the religiousness, the commitment of the things of this world. David knew, they, they spoke to David, they said, David, if you face this Philistine, you're going to receive many things from the king, and he's going to give riches, you're going to allow you to marry his, his daughter. David didn't even care. He asked again, what is going to happen if he faced this Philistine? David didn't care anything. Uh, he didn't want anything from this life. What David wanted was to praise the Lord. He wanted to have freedom to say, the Lord is my God. I'm his servant. That's what David wanted. That was what was in David's heart. 
In my brother, the Lord has called us to live on the work of this Holy Spirit. The Lord wants us to have a commitment with Him. That's why the Lord called us to hear this message. It's not an exhortation. We're not rep reproaching anybody, but it is an awakening. Maybe you are having the wrong understanding of what is the uh, work of the Holy Spirit. Maybe you also not understand what is the word of the Lord. Maybe you have a, a misunderstanding of what you need to do in order to for you to have your vict victory. But it's very simple. You just need to seek the Lord. You just need to give yourself away completely on the hands of the Lord. You just need to allow yourself to be surrounded by what is spiritual and put that in practice in your life. You cannot only you should not only just say about it or knowing the Bible, or just having a Bible or just coming to the service. No, none of it is important. What matters is that you use what is the weapons of the Lord, the resources that come from eternity and put that in practice in your life. That's when you're going to see that the enemy will be ashamed. And you'll see that the enemy will be defeated. And that you will be victorious in the presence of the Lord. Because God will honor you. That's why in our days we are celebrating. We pray f throughout the whole month of November dedicated to the Lord and celebrating and so that this month of November may just be the beginning of a new phase in your life. Maybe you may have not made a single period of fasting. Maybe you didn't pray. Maybe you didn't go to any service of early dawn in November. But may this message tonight be an awakening for you because the Lord ask you to come here tonight in order to fix your vision. The Lord uh, is willing, allowing you to see afar and to understand what it is to be His servant and having a God just like our God. May this message speak to your heart. Let's hear a song.
Blessed be the name of the Lord. I invite every, everyone to stand up. David was a, a man. The other um, warriors are, were also older than him, but David brought something that they didn't know that for us, this revelation of the Lord shows us that truly we need to be re ready and willing to receive the blessing of the Lord. Don't remain on the corner. Don't be discouraged. Right? Wasting your life, going through defeats, but trust in the Lord. You have everything already in your hands. All the resources are already at your disposal. You just need to let maybe this um, situation of um, of fear, of terror, and place your life standing in the presence of the Lord and take possession of your call, of your salvation, and leave this project and uh, this work of the Holy Spirit completely. Amen. You see how things are going to change. You see how you will begin to have moments, noble moments in the presence of the Lord. Don't wait until things get worse. Exercise your salvation. Exercise the resources of the Lord. Now we're going to have a word of glorification. I want to praise you because your church is beyond the veil to contemplate the beauty of your holiness. Lord, we praise you because the God I am. We praise you because the kings of uh, the armies Today, we praise you because tonight's a night, night of restoration. We praise you for the revealed word because it's life for us. We adore you, Lord, because truly your grace is enough for us. We praise you because we're privileged people, because we're your servants, your beloved church, washed, redeemed in the blood of Jesus. We praise you because soon Maranatha will be fulfilled in our lives. We praise you for this night. You give you praises because this place is holy. We praise you for everything in the name of the Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. The Lord has shown that a few that entered here tonight, a few brethren, they are not receiving the blessing of, of victories from the Lord because they are not in uh, going, living a life in the right in the way that the Lord wants them to be. They are not using the means of grace at the right moment. The moment, the right moment for God is not like your right moment. The moment for, right moment for God is every day. The right moment for God is the moment where you are right now. Amen. That's the right moment for God. You need to leave your own time entering to God's time. The last shown, right? There are a few here with a, a wrong understanding or vision of what. It is the project of the Lord completely distorted without being able to discern things or without being able to discern the time in which they are living 40 days the people were there being confronted by Goliath hearing all the, the horrible things that Goliath was saying but David came and a young man and brought the teaching from the part of the Lord Um, diminish your own suffering put in practice in your own life what is the instruction of the Lord amen let us pray close in the service Lord we want to at this moment praise your name because for us it's a pleasure to be in your presence it's very gratifying Lord to be able to hear your voice to be able to receive the spiritual gifts to be able to receive from the part of the Lord all the, the whole doctrine and the, all, all the teaching and all your message we glorify Lord for this gift that you one day gave to men that you gave to each one of us who entered here tonight 
We praise you for our call, particularly for our families, for everything that you have done amongst in our midst. We praise you because uh, you have blessed us until this moment. Receive our service and our offering. I pray that we say in the name of Jesus. In your name we say the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit be poured out upon us now and forever. Amen. The church may be seated. Tomorrow, we're going to have a special service. It's going to start at 9 o'clock in the morning. It's going to be, uh, firstly, with the consecration of the, the fasting. And the women are going to offer uh, breakfast. If you want to bring something to cooperate, you are welcome to do so. It's going to be wonderful. The women are prepared, but if you want to bring something, it's nothing wrong with that. And then at 9.30, we're going to have a service. We're going to have two, two teachings. And then after the two teachings, we're going to have the ministration of the Supper of the Lord. It's going to be a moment of celebration because we have lived moments of victories in the presence of the Lord. You see, this year, most importantly, was a year of great celebration. Last month, we have a, a mini seminar in Los Angeles where we have an uh, anointing of, uh, of uh, uh, servant of the Lord is, is about to become a pastor and also there was another pastor. We see the willing of the Lord in blessing us and it's answer to prayers. All of it, we're going to uh, celebrate and sharing with the brethren tomorrow, receiving this great blessing that the Lord has prepared for us. Amen. And tomorrow night we have the service, 7.30, a service of evangelization. You are invited to, you, you are encouraged to invite someone and whoever was the target of your prayers, a peace of the Lord.